we're going to switch to a more of a storage specific topic right now. Uh, and this, again, my name is uh, Len Rosenthal, uh, head up marketing for Load Dynamics. Has anyone here in the audience actually heard of Load Dynamics before? Okay, half a dozen or so. Okay, that's good. So uh, we're a relatively new company, particularly in Europe. We're just actually, this is, we just actually uh, started our, our European operation literally uh, last week. So what we're going to talk about is the notion of storage performance validation and kind of what that means. And, uh, and it really, it's a, it's a technology around to help you figure out what are the right storage technologies to adopt going forward and which ones are going to be good for your workloads. So what we as a company are doing is what we're trying to do is, is focus on the needs of the storage architects and engineers, the people who are designing and architecting next generation storage systems to support the business applications. So if you look at what the uh, storage architect is trying to focus on, they're trying to, I call them the change agents. They're the ones that are def def defining the future of storage in their organizations. And you know, typically, they're trying to balance cost, risk, time to market. Uh, you know, cost, obviously, is a critical uh, need, and, and everyone is trying to lower storage costs or at least control the growth. Uh, but more importantly, it's about you know, evaluating new technologies, trying to support the business applications to roll out new infrastructure to support that. But the key is implementing change without compromising performance or availability or improving performance and availability. So this is uh, you know, one of the typical market research slides, but uh, 451, who uh, some of you may know, talk about you know, what are the big you know, pain points and the focus of storage. And obviously, the biggest thing is around capacity growth. And obviously, the storage is exploding in terms of uh, data and obviously the cost associated with that. But you know, performance and reporting, uh, cost, technology refreshes, what we're trying to do with storage performance validation is address really these areas. So how do I get a more cost effective, high performance storage infrastructure that allows us to evolve the technology quickly and without risk? So that's what we're focusing on. So if you look at, you know, how do people assure performance today? So if you're going to design a storage system, think about a new storage technology, and is it going to meet the needs of my application workloads? You know, how do you figure out that, that storage requirements, the performance requirements? You know, first thing is, is you know, frankly, I don't figure it out, right? I just go ahead and just over-provision, buy as much as I can, and hopefully that'll be fine. You know, test it in production, pray. Or I'm going to trust my vendors. You know, hey, EMC or whoever, pure storage, whatever says, I need this kind of stuff, so I'm just going to try that and, and trust them. And these days, I mean, the number of people who actually just trust their vendors is going down dramatically. And we all know that the vendors in general are trying to sell as much as possible. So trusting them is generally not a good strategy. Or, you know, frankly, for the more sophisticated shops, they're actually going to have test labs. They're going to test out the performance. They're going to run POCs of new technologies and new products, new architectures. Uh, but, you know, what are the tools to do this? You know, today there's a couple freeware tools out there that are been around like you know something like iometer which is a load testing tool has been around for 25 years uh, but to do that i got to rack and stack you know lots of servers hundreds of vms configure it test it write a bunch of custom scripts uh, custom reports so it's very time consuming and not a very good strategy so anyway so those are the problems that we're trying to address uh, as our company here so obviously over provisioning is no no longer a viable strategy i mean the cost of storage just keeps escalating uh, by some accounts, you know, 40 to 50 percent of your physical infrastructure spend is going to be storage. And it's been increasing every year over the last, you know, decade. No one will do that. The vendors, you can't really trust the vendors because at the end of the day, they don't know your application workloads. Most of you are running whatever Oracle or Exchange or whatever it's going to be. Every organization uses these applications differently. So how you know, one organization and user community is accessing data is going to be different. So they don't know it, and at the end of the day, you're responsible for SLA. These uh, relying on uh, you know, freeware tools and doing custom development is just very intensive. You're going to spend 80% of your time setting up your tests and only 20% of your time running them. So it's not a, not a viable strategy either. So what Load Dynamics is doing and uh, this whole concept of storage performance performance validation is allowing you to get a better understanding of your internal production workloads. So how do I characterize what's today running? How is, it, how is that traffic hitting the storage system? What is that characterization? 
I call it an I.O. profile. Some people call it the DNA or the fingerprint of the storage. So what we're going to do is help you figure out what does that production storage I.O. profile look like, and then we're going to put it into this modeling application. So this allows you to figure out what is the read-write mix and the random sequential mix and the block size distribution or file size distribution, your directory structures, you know, simulate queue depths, figure out your dedupe and compression ratios and how that's going to impact performance. So we're going to allow you to model all that to change it to do the what-if analysis on my infrastructure. Everyone has probably, you know, implemented a storage system infrastructure and Thinks, thinks they know what the, really, what the headroom is in there, and then they're all surprised at the end of the day of, wow, didn't realize we're going to hit that that quick. So how can I simulate not just what I think my current you know, volume is going to be, but how about 2x, 5x, 10x that? What happens to performance? Where do I hit you know, this, the ceiling on performance? So we, you know, there's a software application that we have. We have a, a load generation appliance that allows you to generate massive network storage traffic against storage systems to test it basically in your lab, so in a pre-production environment. So what we do is we have this special purpose box, custom uh, Debian Linux operating system, custom drivers to generate millions of IOPS to test storage systems and new architectures. And whether it's file, block, or object. So one of the big things people are trying to figure out right now is which of my applications justify the use of Flash? Right? Everybody would love to go to all flash data centers tomorrow, right? I mean, low cost, low power, high performance, but frankly, it's still three to five times the cost per gigabyte of spinning disk. So it's not justified for every workload. So how do you figure out which workloads are justified to go to flash? Common question. So you're going to test that out, whether it's you know, file or, or, or block typically, you know, object storage systems. A lot of people are trying to figure out, OK, can OpenStack you know, Swift or Cinder, are those technologies, are they viable for my production workloads? You know, S3, CDMI, those things. I mean, how do you figure that out? How can I take my legacy, you know, applications and move them into this new lower cost architecture? How am I going to test that? How am I going to figure that out? So that's effectively what this can do here. And typically what you're looking at is usually the performance statistics. You know, it's IOPS throughputs, and most importantly, of course, it's latency. That's the biggest impact. So what we're doing as a company is we're standardizing this process, giving you that lab in a box that is relatively inexpensive that can allow you to do test all this stuff before you go production, make better decisions, avoid over-provisioning, avoid under-provisioning that infrastructure. So uh, as a company, we're still uh, you know, relatively new in, into the Europe uh, PN marketplace, but uh, our history is we started off selling to the vendors, selling basically storage, testing systems, storage, you know, scaling limit, you know, how do I scale that? Uh, EMC was our first customer. EMC basically didn't want to have uh, a lab of, you know, hundreds of servers to test their high-end storage systems. So they said there's got to be a better way, and that's how they found us. So EMC, NetApp, HP, IBM, Dell, Cisco, all of them, plus most of the startups are all using our technology. So it's proven technology. They started to bring us into their end-user IT organizations uh, to prove the value of their products to prove that their technology can scale running the customer's workloads. So uh, you, know, you can see some of the customers there that you'll recognize that, that are actually using this. And typically, these systems uh, are used to simulate their workloads. I mean, in your larger organization, you've got hundreds, maybe thousands of workloads that are all have different I.O. profiles. So which applications do I move to the new architectures? You know, which ones do I have to keep my legacy systems? So that gives you a sense of kind of who the customers are. So what we're trying to do is help people throughout that whole storage life cycle. So if you look at, you know, again, the views of an, you know, an engineer, an architect of storage, they're trying to evaluate new technologies, right? So everything from Flash or hybrid architectures to OpenStack to Ceph. Uh, if I'm in a file environment, I may be on an older version of NFS, so NFS 3.2. What about these new versions, NFS 4.1, 4.2? Is it worthwhile to upgrade to those technologies? Is there any benefit? So we're going to help people evaluate it. Software-defined storage. Then, OK, I've chosen the technology. I'll use Flash as an example. You know, what's the best product? Should I be using you know, EMC or Pure or SolidFire or Coho, whatever? What are the uh, you know, various uh, technology best products to use? 
Now I've chosen a product. What's the right configuration to use? How much flash do I really need? You know, how do I implement my tiering policies? So we're going to help you figure that out. Uh, Pre-production staging. So now I've implemented, about to go live and cut over to a new production system, but I want to test it running my workloads in a simulated fashion and do that immediately before I go live. I don't want the, the risk when I cut over. And then finally, it's around change management and change validation. Uh, as we all know, and as you just heard earlier, I mean, the software vendors, the, the storage vendors, the switch vendors, they're constantly upgrading their, you know, the software and firmware on their products. And, um, you know, one of our biggest customers that uses this is uh, PayPal, which hopefully most of you know PayPal, but PayPal is a very large HDS customer, and they have been burned by HDS doing firmware updates that they said, oh, it'll work fine, just put it right in production, and it literally brought down PayPal for three hours and hit the Wall Street Journal. This was a few years ago. So now they test every patch, every update, you know, with their applications, their simulated applications in their lab before they cut over to live, making sure there's no performance degradation, making sure that if, if it's claimed performance increase, you know, prove it from my workloads. So, so that's an example of, uh, you know, what you can do with the storage performance validation architecture. So I guess I'm being beeped. That means my uh, time is running slow here, or running up here. But anyway, so we do two different things with, with, in this technology. So one is workload modeling. And this means getting those I.O. profiles or your production applications, simulating it, putting it in an environment, and be able to generate massive load uh, against your systems to do comparisons or find the breaking points. Second thing we offer, we do, is performance profiling. So this is looking at the sweet spots and weaknesses of storage arrays. So a couple of our big customers in the U.S. who are using this, like AT&T and American Express and Bank of New York, uh, what they do is they profile. They have pretty much one of everything. You know, big companies have you know, lots of different vendors. They don't settle on one vendor. They want to know what each product is good for. So what is Extreme I.O. good for? What is you know, Isilon good for? What is Pure Storage good for? Which kinds of workloads? How do I figure out which product to deploy for which application? And they can profile... It's kind of like a player card in sports, to use a sports analogy. So those are the two typ typical different things that people are doing. Okay, so in any case, so we have a series of products that, uh, you know, a virtual version, then we have 10G, Fiber Channel, Unified, which is both Ethernet uh, and Fiber Channel, uh, all the storage protocols. So any new architecture you want to take, you want to look at is going to be a, uh, something that we can generate traffic and help you make decisions, intelligent decisions around storage architectures. I'll skip most of this stuff, but I'll give you just one example here. So one of our customers in the U.S. is GoDaddy. I don't know how big they are here in the, in the U.K., but they're obviously a major web hosting company. But they were sitting on legacy storage, and I won't name the vendor because I don't want to insult them, but a, a large vendor of file storage systems uh, based in the U.S. And they had over 30 petabytes of data. They had a new, basically, VP CIO came in and said, you know, how do we get into the, the Google cost structure? as you just heard from Nigel talk about earlier, you know, everybody wants to be Google, and it's like, how do I get those costs down? So they basically did a whole you know, large project to move to a software-defined storage, get in a commodity x86 hardware, and they did all this. They ended up choosing, at the time, Nixenta. So they've got now Nixenta running on Dell, replacing all of this legacy storage, and they're about to implement Ceph as their new architecture. And they're making all these transitions because they have the ability to simulate their workloads. They have all of that, their workloads in a can, and they literally are using load dynamics every single day to test out new releases and new technologies and, and get confidence to make that change into a whole new architecture and new approach. And they're literally cutting their storage costs by about two-thirds. And they spend tens of millions of dollars on storage. Huge, huge savings. But you've got to have the tools to have the confidence to make these kind of transitions. So in any case, I'll skip the rest there more the detail in the sake of time here, but we're going to give you, actually, the last point I'll make is around flash storage performance validation. So the big issue with uh, flash storage is, you now right now there's, you know, a dozen vendors that are viable. Um, the interesting part, this was actually from a, an exact actual customer and their results, but they simulated comp highly compressible workloads and non-compressible workloads. So the one thing about flash storage, to make it affordable, you have to use dedupe and compression to make it get the cost per gig down. But the, every vendor has their own proprietary algorithm of how they implement compression and dedupe. It has huge impacts on performance. 
not a 10%, 20%, and like you know, 100%, 200% impact, depending upon your workload. So you've got to test out flash storage systems with dedupe and compression turned on. And uh, in this case, they ended up, you know, two different vendors are going after this business. They're all trying to win all of it. And what they found out was one vendor is better on highly compressible content, and one vendor was not so good on that. So they end up going with a two-vendor solution based on the data that they uh, you know, got from uh, Load Dynamics. OK, so that's it. That's uh, probably some more detail there. But in any case, so we've been around uh, since, since 2009, primarily in the US. Now we're coming to, the, uh, to here. But again, it's an integrated hardware software platform to do high performance load generation and testing for your storage systems to, to make those changes with confidence.